Welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold, the world's greatest redneck. And today in this video I hope to finish the uh, knurling tool that we've been working on. And uh, I'm going to have to change the design a little bit because some of the stuff I ordered for hinge pins hasn't shipped yet and I'm tired of waiting for it. So we'll, we'll use something else until the stuff arrives. And then something else will probably wind up being permanent. <laughs> All right, and I, I did a couple of impulse purchases uh, this week, and the boss lady actually accepted it. I, I didn't have to sleep in the garage or anything, so I'll just go ahead and flip the camera around here, and I'll show you what what I got. But before we go any further with this video, we need to acknowledge some recent arrivals, and I got some stickers from Billy Huddleston at Knox Machining, and some stickers from just one guy. Metalworks, both YouTube channels and both worth you uh, going there and taking a look at them. And we'll put these on the sticker board here, find a nice place. This guy is Canadian, so we need to put him near every. Oh no, not near, this guy, I'm sorry, this guy's Canadian. I <laughs> wasn't paying attention to what I had my hand on. This guy is in Knoxville, Tennessee. Sorry about that. We'll get him on board. Okay, there's uh, our two new stickers to the left of the screen and to the right of the screen about the middle of the, <laughs> of your view. Uh, I put uh, just one guy machine shop in the British Empire area. It's, it's sort of loosely defined there, but sort of in that area. And I uh, put Billy Knox over the, uh, Billy Huddleston of Knox Machining right there under Chuck Bomarito because Billy's kind of a nice guy. Chuck's a nice guy. Of course, Chuck's 5% nicer than most. So there you are, stickers are up. So, Jorian Khan called me, or actually he sent me a text, he, said, I, he saw this on uh, uh, Facebook Marketplace, and of course I don't do Facebook, so I didn't see it. But anyway, he said it was for sale, and uh, so I said, well, give me the guy's contact information, and we made a deal for it. That's what I went for, but what I really like best out of what I got is this other item. Okay, so this second item, as you can see, it's got a tag on it that says Texas a and University, made by students engineering all right so let's back off from it and it looks like an antique grill press doesn't it and i saw that and i thought well that is absolutely too cool i i got to take that home with me and it actually costs less than the bandsaw so you know I, it's a win all the way around and it really works and all that it's the motor is very super quiet and, and uh, it's, it's an old motor. I guess this must have been an old project. We'll get up close to the motor and take a look. We know it's got plane bearings because it's got an oil cup on each end of the uh, of the motor. So there'll be a wick in there to hold the oil and let it drip onto the motor shaft down into the bearing. Alright, that's, that's a sign that it's an old motor. Okay, and this side of course is standard drill press stuff. And yeah, I uh, I don't really need a drill press because I've uh, <laughs> I've got one, but this is just too cool for me to, to ignore it. You know, I like the looks of it, and so it came home with me. I mean, it, it had to; it couldn't stay there. All right. Okay, so that half-inch uh, round piece there will be the swivelly piece that goes in the hole with a rod through the middle of it to adjust the clamping pressure. Okay, and there'll be one on each one of the arms. And that's about where it needs to go, right there. So we'll have to drill a hole for that. Then we've got to come over here and drill a hole for the axle of the uh, knurling roller. And of course, both of them have to have that. So this is where we're at right now. just a matter of habit that I reach out to hold on there. I couldn't possibly hold that better than, uh, than a Kurt Weiss, but there you go. All right, we'll return to the fight. We're going to work up to a quarter inch, and then we're going to ream the final hole. It's just on them. If I go all the way through, I'm going to drill out my parallel, so I'd rather not make that mistake right now. Maybe later, but not right now. So I'll let you sleep while I get the right parallel. 
All right, now we can drill for the half inch hole. And there we are, that's our half inch hole. And I'll set up to do the next piece. I'm going to ream the hole with a one over reamer. fit in there. I can put away the reamer. The, one, the half inch drill bit got me as tight as I need to be. I don't need it any tighter than that for sure. So there we are. I don't need to ream the next one. Alright so let me get finished up on the quarter inch hole. Alright the quarter inch reamer is 1000 thunder. So let's put off the axle to be a press fit except inside of the rotor. I almost forgot to wake you guys up, but what I need is a slot that runs along the backbone there for about an inch or so. I need a quarter inch slot because I'm going to put a quarter inch rod through there. So the easiest way to get a lot of metal out is to drill it out. That's what I'm doing. drill the other one. It'll be the same game as this so you can sleep through it. Alright now that the big part of the metal has been removed I'll take this uh, quarter inch end mill and we'll just sort of rake it back and forth there dropping it down low and moving it back and forth till we get that slot cut on uh, as far as it'll go down and then I'm after to turn that piece over and finish the slot from the other side. I had to move you back a little bit. I threw on the Z uh, Crank there. All right, that didn't cut all the way through, but it cut deep enough that I can roll it over and cut from the other side. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece out, put the other piece in it, facing that exact same way, cut the same slot, and. Uh, then I'll roll them both over and do the same thing again. Alright, so once you finish a piece with a slot, you got to slide all the way through, and you'll be putting a uh, quarter inch rod through there on that little swivel, and it will be able to swivel that kind of a distance. I think you can see it there. It's, I think pretty good enough to open up to its maximum ability. So, next thing to do is to drill the holes and the little axle that goes in there. And then we'll be right on top of getting through except for, you know, glue in this stuff. I forgot to turn on the camera for the hole drilling, at least for most of it. But I've got the little pieces that are going to be our swivel thingus. That's a technical term, mind you, swivel thingus, so don't get, don't let it get you confused. Anyway, you're watching now. So, I'm going to put one more hole in here. And then I'm going to get this clamp out of the way. And I'm going to try to thread this little bit. And the reason I'm threading one of these is so that my rod won't go 
moving it up and down independently from one end to the other. I thought about that and I thought, well, that, that's not what I want to have happen. All right, back to low range. <coughs> okay. Now then, I'm going to slick them. See. Doesn't have a large wrench, but it's what was handy here. chips in there. I don't believe they're Doritos. Uh, there we go. Broke the chip. If we can get through the other way. This is a pretty tough metal real right. So it's all together possible that I could break a tap if I'm not careful. Lucky for me I've got a lot of quarter twenties. I just want to go any deeper. I don't guess maybe it really has to go any deeper, necessarily. If I can run it in and jam it, it's just as good as putting a lock nut on it. I wonder. Back to incremental so I know when I one way or the other. Yeah. That's in there and that's good enough. I think I'm gonna go with that and we'll just tighten it down till it jams tight and that'll be what I wanted anyway.